Welcome to Becoming Limitless. This is the podcast for entrepreneurs who want to optimize their brain and their body with biohacking. I'm going to teach you how to eliminate brain fog and upgrade your health so you can have more productivity, energy, and growth in your business. I'm your host, Tanessa Shears. Let's jump in. Welcome back to the Becoming Limitless podcast. Today was one of those days where I got into my office and it was so cold that like my fingers felt weird typing. Do you know that feeling that I'm talking about? So I have the space heater on beside me. I have a hot cup of green tea in my hands and I'm sitting on a heating pad with fuzzy socks. So I'm really hoping that I get warmed up because I'm excited to talk to you guys today about the eight rules I follow to help me fall asleep quickly so that I can wake up refreshed, ready to hit the ground running and have a successful, productive and efficient day in my business. Now, I, when I was sitting down to kind of write out this episode and I was thinking like, I genuinely believe that I can fall asleep pretty dang quickly and that I don't struggle with this too much. And I know this isn't the case for so many entrepreneurs. We have a hard time winding down and we stare up at the ceiling and we think about our to-do list or we worry about something we haven't got to or something we have to get to or a conversation that we had. Or, you know, we hit our pillow and we just can't get our brains to turn off or we end up reading way longer than we'd like or all of the activities of our evening are basically just preparing preventing us from falling asleep quickly. And then we start doing that thing, especially when you've been tossing and turning for a little while of like, oh my gosh, I'm never going to get enough sleep if I can't fall asleep right now. And then I'm going to feel even worse tomorrow. And we start getting in our heads and stressing out and worrying about our sleep. And that makes the whole situation worse. And I remember when it used to take me a while to fall asleep. And I know these exact feelings that you're going through. And so I don't want you to struggle with that. So I was like, interesting. Over the years of biohacking my sleep, I have developed some really succinct evening routines and things that I do like almost as the rule, not the exception. And today I want to share these with you so that you can start falling asleep quickly too. Now I do want to make one note before we start. If you're listening to this and you're like, ah, I don't need this episode. I'm one of those people that as soon as my head hits the pillow at night, I am out. I fall asleep quickly. I don't have a problem with this. I want to ask you this. If you are able to fall asleep in less than five minutes when your head hits the pillow, I have a little bit of bad news. You're probably exhausted. So the term I want to introduce you to is called sleep latency. And what that means is it is the time that it takes you to fall asleep. And in a, the average healthy adult, it should take at the shortest five minutes and the longest 15 to 20 minutes. Remember this, we don't just go to sleep, we fall asleep gradually, right? So if you are able to put your head on the pillow and be out within 30 seconds, what I would say is if you were my client and I was looking at your sleep data and if you were telling me this is I might say, hmm, I don't know if you're getting either A, enough restorative time during the day or enough sleep at night. So it may just be that you're carrying enough of a sleep debt that it is causing you to feel exhausted. So if this is you and you're not having trouble falling asleep, and that's all right, but I would implore you to maybe explore getting a little more sleep at night. I want you to look at what's going on here, right? We need to build in some energy boosting habits during the day and get a little bit longer sleep at night. So before we jump in, I actually wanted to do something fun, something that I feel like all of the, you know, the fun big podcasts do because I have something fun coming out and I actually want to sponsor this whole podcast episode. So let's be a little official here. This episode is officially sponsored by my brand new program that is going to be coming out in probably about a week from when you hear this episode and it is called the CEO Sleep Lab. I'm so excited to share this with you guys. The CEO Sleep Lab, it's a program that I've designed specifically for six and seven figure entrepreneurs, just like you, who want to recharge your mind and your body with cutting edge techniques and wearable technology and biohacking, and you'll want to do it in less than 90 days, right? This is the culmination of the work that I've been doing with all of my clients and entrepreneurs and sleep for the last four years, right? And it's a combination of coaching 
and a course. And it's designed to help you wake up well rested, ready to start your day and have a really good night of sleep. And inside this, I'm going to teach you my entire system from start to finish on how to biohack your evening routine, your bedroom, your morning routine, put it all in the right order, break it down and make it simple. So it's going to be a combination of one-to-one strategy calls, a step-by-step video training program, and Voxer access for accountability in between all of our coaching calls. And this is an offer you won't want to sleep on. Do you like that? Do you like that little joke that I just threw in there? You won't want to sleep on it. So it's officially going to be launching Monday, January 30th. And there are going to be five spots open for opening week because I am doing a lot of coaching calls with this and a lot of Voxer access and I want to make sure it's at the highest level. So with opening launch, I'm going to be offering some pretty amazing deals, including 25% off the, for the first three people. I'm going to be offering a 60 minute bonus fast start focus call with me that we can strategize and plan everything out and a personalized roadmap. And I'm going to make a customized action strategy for you to get good sleep. And I created this CEO sleep lab to give entrepreneurs just like you, the tools and guidance to make lasting changes to your sleep habits during even the busiest seasons of your life. So if you want to jump on the wait list, you can go to tanessashears.com slash wait list. That link will be in the description or you can DM me the word waitlist on Instagram at Tanessa Shears, and you will be get the first information when we launch. So if you know you already want in, you're just like, I don't care. This is something I'm going to be doing. You can reply to the welcome email for the waitlist and just prepay for your spot before anyone else. There is a chance that I might fill all of these spots before we even open to the public. So if this is the year you want to optimize your sleep, let's work together in the CEO sleep lab. All right. Now that we have talked about the most exciting brand new program of the year, let's jump into eight rules that I follow to fall asleep quickly. Now, I do want to just keep a note at the front of this that these are rules that I follow. They are what has worked well for me. And I pretty much do these 99.999% of nights. But this doesn't mean that this is the only way to do it. And it doesn't mean the perfect way to do it. And it doesn't mean if you're doing it differently, it is wrong. I'm just showing you what has worked for me and also what I have translated into results for my clients year after year. All right. So If my brain doesn't work, my business suffers. So this is how I present all of these eight rules. So let's get into number one. Take at least an hour off of technology and screens before bed. Now, if you've listened to many of my episodes before, you know that tech and screens have a twofold problem. Number one is that that blue light coming from all of your screens is basically telling your brain, hey, it's the middle of the day, don't release any melatonin, and we need to stay wide awake, focused, and clear. Well, that's exactly what we don't want for sleep, right? We want to feel tired. We want to feel calm. We want to feel uh, our brain wants that information that it's evening time and that we should start producing some melatonin. That's that sleep hormone we always talk about. So if you are staring into an, your phone screen, and I clients tell me this all the time, scrolling Instagram because it's their me time right up until bed, watching TV right up until bed, you know, hanging out on TikTok right up until bed as a way to kind of escape from the day and unwind your brain. Well, this is going to make it a lot harder to fall asleep, not only because you're telling your brain it's the middle of the day, but think about all of the dopamine and adrenaline that your brain is receiving from processing all of this information from, you know, the shows on your TV to every Instagram post, because I really want you to think about this. Every time you scroll past an Instagram post, a couple things need to happen. You need to decide things like, do I agree with this post? Do I not? Do I like it? Do I not? Do I comment it? Do I not? Do I watch the full video? Do I stop here? Do I want to keep scrolling or am I done for the night? And think about that. Every post you scroll by and let's say you scroll past 60 posts and I asked my brain five questions. That's like 300 micro decisions you need to be making before bed. Not only that, but every time you scroll to the next post, you get a little hit of dopamine because is it going to be a good one? Is it going to be a bad one? Is it going to rile you up? Is it going to get you in compare and despair? All of these things before sleep 
are going to be keeping your brain alert and in fight or flight. And this is not going to help you fall asleep. Most of the time when I work with entrepreneurs that have trouble falling asleep, it's because they are still in some sort of fight or flight or experiencing higher cortisol and that is keeping them awake, right? So we're looking at like what are the inputs and the sources of stress and cortisol that I have going on in my day and my evening and in the hour before bed and in the half an hour before bed. So My rule of thumb in my house is we turn tech off at least an hour before bed. So what that will look like is we are actually in the middle of a screen-free month right now. We are not watching any TV, any YouTube, anything like that. So we're not watching it. But on a normal week where we would be watching TV, it goes off by 6.30 or 7 at the latest. And the reason for that is because we like to be in bed by eight and sleeping by nine at the latest. So this gives us lots of time to wind down. And I usually put my phone on airplane mode and do not disturb. And that is the last screen I will see. That usually happens somewhere between 7.30 and eight. So again, if you're looking at my bedtime being between 8.30 and nine, it's about an hour to an hour and a half out. Number two, the rule that I use is I slow down my evening. So as humans, like I said in the introduction here, we don't just go to sleep. It's not like we just flip the switch and we are asleep, right? We descend through different brainwave states to get there. So if you've listened to some of my episodes on that, and I think I have an earlier episode all on different brainwave states, our brains are in beta right now. We are focused. It slows down into alpha. It slows down through theta. And then finally, we reach delta waves, which are nice, slow, luxurious uh, waves in our brain wave activity. And that is what deep sleep is, right? And we have to go through those. And what we often do is we spend all of this time active in our brain and then expect to just transition to the slowest state instantly. What I like to do is in my evening, I like to think about the activities that I'm doing and how are they slowing my brain down, right? I want to look at what am I stimulating my brain with? Am I removing those things? Am I stopping the input, the information? Like as humans, I find it's fascinating. We always love consuming the information from other brains, right? Whether that be social media, whether that be a training program you're doing, whether that be listening to a podcast like this. Like we really do get a good dopamine hit off of consuming this information. And this is great, right? But we want to have time in our evenings that has solitude in it. And Cal Newport in his book, Digital Minimalism, described solitude as just the absence of input from other people's brains, right? Do we have some time that is just alone with how we think and how we feel? And what's going on in our lives and chance for reflection or quiet stretching or reading, right? Like, are there activities that slow you down? And one of the things that I always love, especially on these warmer, as it's getting, you know, warmer weather is I really like going for an evening after dinner walk. I find it kind of is like the pivot point of the evening where everything starts to slow down and, you know, we're focusing on getting good quality light in our eyes and I'm spending time with family, kids go to bed, warm shower, jump in bed, read a book. You know what I mean? Like we're really looking at slowing down the pace and it should be that hour to two before bed, even three hours should be a contrast with what the rest of your day looks like. So if you're in your business and you're going full speed, right? You have client meetings and you're writing emails and you're maybe recording a podcast or you're doing some back end client work, right? Like all of this should be a stark contrast to the pace of your evening. And so this is one of the things that I have found works wonderful for helping me fall asleep. Rule number three, I wrap up food at least three hours before sleep. Now, the funny thing is, is as I'm recording this, we actually just had my dad's birthday dinner last night and everyone was over until about 7.45 p.m., which is encroaching on our usual bedtime, right? And we are usually done eating by six at the very latest, usually 5.30 So just naturally as a birthday party, we had some birthday ice cream and it was really late. It was like at 730. And of course, I woke up this morning and my sleep, you know, I had a massive heart rate spike right when I went to sleep. My body was focusing on digestion. Blood sugar was all over the place. And we're going to talk about that in a sec. But it's super interesting, the proximity with which you um, eat relative to sleep can really uh, affect your body's ability to wind down because I want you to think of like your body has to direct its focus and its energy and its attention to something, right? And if we eat these really large meals right before bed, all of our energy goes to focusing on digestion 
and processing all the food you've eaten and bringing your blood sugar back down instead of, you know, quality sleep, instead of allowing you to wind down, right? And it's like, if you've ever eaten a very high carb meal, like, you know, uh, let's say pasta or, you know, like we had last night, ice cream, right? You'll notice that you probably get a little bit of ramp up in cortisol and energy. And these are the things that we don't necessarily want to ramp up going into sleep. And that kind of leads into point number four is as a rule, I generally eat moderate amounts of complex carbohydrates for dinner, right? So I don't swing too far one way or the other. Um, for example, I don't eat keto relative going to bed, meaning no carbs at all. And I don't eat a giant plate of pasta and call it a night. Of course, there are going to be exceptions. Like I just talked about birthday party last night. We had sam- we had beef dip sandwiches and we had ice cream bowls. So it was pretty much a giant carb bomb. And I felt that, right? I really did feel that in my sleep. So we're wanting to look at like in our evenings and our dinners, are we eating a moderate amount of complex carbohydrates? And if you haven't heard that word before, Complex carbohydrates simply refers to how quickly the carbohydrates are broken down once they hit our bloodstream. So it's contrasting with simple carbohydrates. Now, simple carbohydrates, we all know about. Simple carbohydrates are things like um, pasta, bread, uh, baked goods, pizza. It's anything that I want you to think about it as like a, a refined flour, or a sugar, something that comes in a powder form. Now, if you think about this, if you remember back to science eight class, when you used to, you know, grind up the chemicals or whatever like that and increase the surface area of it. So turning a solid into a powder, it reacts a lot quicker, right? Well, the same is true when it hits your body. So if you take a wheat plant, you turn it into flour, when the flour hits your bloodstream, it's going to have a much more exaggerated effect on your blood sugar, right? And when blood sugar goes up and down, it's going to disrupt our sleep. We want really steady blood sugar. So for that reason, I always like to do complex carbohydrates. And those are things like sweet potatoes and rice and quinoa, vegetables, things like that. You know, when they hit the body and they hit the bloodstream, it is a gradual release because often if you think about it, sweet potatoes are accompanied and rice have starch in them, which slows down the release of, you know, carbohydrates into the bloodstream and vegetables have lots of fiber, right? And the other reason I do like a moderate amount of complex carbohydrates at dinner is because carbohydrates are a precursor. That means we are, we need them to make serotonin, which is the feel good neurotransmitter. And that is a precursor to making melatonin. So research has shown that a moderate amount of complex carbohydrate for dinner can help us fall asleep. Now, it's kind of like getting that like big uh, comatose feeling that you get after eating a large carbohydrate meal, but we're just using a moderate amount. Rule number five is I rarely eat simple carbohydrates. We talked about those as sugar, flour, processed foods after 3 p.m., right? So in the evening, our hormone called insulin is not as effective. And insulin's job, when it sees the blood sugar levels come up because we've eaten some food, specifically carbohydrates, insulin's job is to come in and bring our blood sugar levels back down. Well, in the evening, it actually doesn't do as good of a job as it does in the morning. So what that means is it takes longer to bring our blood sugar levels back to to baseline right? It takes much longer. So this is going to affect our ability to fall asleep and stay asleep, right? We don't want to have a problem where we're waking up in a couple of hours. So because of that, I'm always thinking like the foods that I'm eating in the afternoon, are these contributing to me having a good sleep and stable blood sugar or not? And that's just a really easy assessment you can make by looking at your plate. And if you're like, whoa, blood sugar, what's going on? I don't know how to do this. Here's a really good rule of thumb. When you're looking at your dinner, I want you to be able to ask yourself these two things. One, did the food on my plate come from the ground? Meaning at one point, was it a plant? Two, did it have a mother? Meaning is it a protein or an animal sourced food? So that's just a really good gauge of if it is a whole food because whole foods generally come mostly packaging free. They had a mother that came from the ground, right? Like if you're comparing it to like bread, nope, that was a processed food. If you're looking at ice cream, nope, that is a processed food. Neither of those came from the ground or had a mother. So just a really easy um, gauge there to just make it really simple. Rule number six, I love to go for post dinner walks. And this is not only because it helps me slow down my evening. Remember I alluded to that earlier, going for post dinner walks 
allows me to see the sun set and the sky darken. So what we don't recognize as humans is how much light is giving our brain information, right? And we're going to be talking about that a ton in next week episode. I have an episode coming for you all on circadian rhythms. Oh, it is so good and something I think every business owner needs to know about for productivity, energy, and sharpness. But basically when our brain interprets light, it interprets, okay, how high in the sky is the light? Is it overhead or is it on the horizon? It determines how bright it is and it also looks at the color of it, right? So when we go for these post-dinner walks, what it does is sunset is low in the sky, it's nice and dim, and it's reds and pinks and oranges usually, right? And all of this communicates information to our brain that it is time to begin that whole wind down process and sleep, right? So this is contrasting to sitting in front of our televisions at night when we are looking at bright white and blue light and giving our brain constant information that it is the middle of the day. Now, I'm going to offer to get out and go for a post dinner walk. Now, when I am recording this, it is about dark at about 5 p.m. right now. So one of the things I am doing is I'm kind of inserting it as a transition between work and evening. So for example, on most days, I don't finish work any later than I, th- I finish at about 1230 two days a week and I finish around 430 or five two days a week. So I will actually insert the walk between the end of my workday and the evening. So there is a brain cue to switch and to transition modes. Now in the summer when it's light until eight or nine or 10 p.m. at night, we'll then just go for the walk after dinner. But I really like to take advantage of kind of that sunset hour in helping my brain really wind down. Now, on that note, there was actually a really interesting study that came up in a podcast episode I was listening to. I am a huge fan of the Huberman Lab podcast. Um, he is a neuroscientist out of Stanford, and he produ- he um, goes over many in-detailed studies and how uh, everything around us affects our brain. So one of the studies he was reviewing actually showed that when you view this uh, transition of light that happens in the evening right at sunset, if you are outside and you are able to view that and be outside for a while, it actually blunts the effects of screens later at night. So if you are to, you know, check your phone for something, or you are to watch an episode of TV, that blue light will have less of an effect on your sleep than if you had not gone outside or seen the sunset at all. So I thought that was super cool and something that I have been experimenting with and just wanted to uh, pop in here so that you could experiment with that too. Number seven, rule number seven, is I follow a progressive science-based wind down routine. And the key is that it happens at the same time, 99% of the time right? So I'm going to bed within that 20 minute window usually. And and I always like to recommend to people make it a 20 to 30 minute window, but I keep mine very, very narrow. I actually just got um, my aura ring, which is a wearable tracking device that I have that monitors my sleep. It spits out data to me um, at the end of every week at the end of every month, quarter, and year. And it, it gives me just a, a rundown of my data. And it was fascinating. And it said it was comparing my sleep start and end time on a weekday versus a weekend. And they were identical. And this is taking the average over the year. And I thought that was so interesting that my sleep time is exactly the same. Now, this doesn't mean yours needs to be, but this just shows to the consistency I have been able to experience and what that has done for my ability to fall asleep really quickly, right? So we are looking at, when I say a progressive science-based wind down routine, it's kind of alluding to what I talked about earlier about how your brain waves need to go through that sequential set of steps in order to truly uh, be ready to go to sleep. So there's a couple questions you can actually ask yourself. Do I feel myself progressively getting calmer? And this is the question I ask my clients all the time. I ask them, do you feel calm before you go to sleep? Like, do you feel like you have been able to let the day go? So regardless of, you know, if you're spending time in your brain, like, are you in theta or are you in alpha? Like, what's your brain doing? Like, that's a level that I teach inside my programs. But a good question for you to ask is this. Do you feel calm before you go to sleep? Like, do you feel grounded, present, relaxed, refreshed, recharged? These are all words my clients are always telling me that they are seeking before bed. And if you are not, what I want you to ask yourself is, well, what might I be able to include in my evening routine that creates that? And that is going to be the sign of a good wind down routine. You're asking yourself like, hey, 
Did I achieve that feeling or that state? And if you didn't, that's not a problem. Just swap out your activities and try something new. And if you did, great, keep it, right? So you're just looking at, is this routine winding you down? Is it progressive? And is it happening pretty consistently at the same time, right? Because if you have a consistent bedtime and a consistent wind down routine, your brain's like, okay, we're going to produce melatonin at this time. We're going to start winding down at this time. We know, you know, our circadian rhythm is going to be that clock, uh, internal clock is going to be kept on track. I can predict this. We can have good sleep. And it's amazing when you lean into your biology instead of fight it all the time and switch up your bedtimes. And sometimes you do this and sometimes you do this. It is amazing what that will do for your brain performance. So last rule, eight rules to fall asleep quickly. We're on number eight. I actually let my core temperature drop. So we're going to be talking about this more next week, but our core temperature dropping is actually one of the things that has to happen on our way into high quality sleep. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can have a warm shower and you can air dry. And so by air drying or drying off after heat escapes the body and evaporates off. And so what that simulates is a core temperature drop. Another thing that I'll do is I'll wear less layers than I need. So let's say I'm kind of, I want to wear socks and pajama pants and a long sleeve top. Maybe I will lose the socks. I will have shorts on and then my long sleeve top. So I always dress in one layer than what I need. And I know in the winter time, we just want to cozy up. We want to sit on a heating pad. We want to have all the blankets and all the cozy fleece jammies, but I really want to invite you wear breathable pajamas, less layers than you need. Allow yourself to be a little cool and this will really foster much better sleep. And this transition, like I said, that drop in core temperature is needed for proper melatonin production. So I'd ask yourself like, are you letting your core temperature drop? Because if you are too warm or you are bundled up, it might make it harder for you to fall asleep or stay asleep. So those are the eight rules. I'm going to review them really quick. We're going to take at least an hour off between screens, tech, and bedtime. I slow down my evening. I wrap up eating three hours before sleep. I eat a moderate amount of complex carbohydrates. I rarely eat simple carbs after 3 p.m. I go for post-dinner walks. I follow a progressive science-based wind-down routine, and I let my core temperature drop. And those are the eight rules that pretty much without fail, I follow every night unless there is a special occasion, and these really help me fall asleep quickly. Now, as we wrap up to this episode, I want to just remind you that the wait list is open for the CEO Sleep Lab. And if you want to jump on that wait list, head to tanessashears.com forward slash wait list. Link is in the description. And if you're listening to this in the future and you're like, dang, that sounded fun. I want you to head to tanessashears.com And find the link to book in a consultation call with me and talk about if this is the perfect fit for you. So I hope you guys have a great week and you use these eight rules. Maybe you take one of them or two of them. I want you to just choose what works for you. Start there. And if you want to make this an eight week program for yourself, do one at a time and add one a week for eight weeks. And you have a super easy action plan that you can help or implement to help you fall asleep much quicker. So I hope you guys have a beautiful week and I hope you fall asleep quickly but not too quickly because we want good sleep latency right so I'll talk to you next time bye learn something new in this episode or feel inspired to take action I'd love for you to share it with a friend and leave a review your review will help one more entrepreneur feel healthier more energized and focused if you feel good about helping a friend or a fellow business owner you've never even met You are my kind of people. I'm excited to help you become limitless in the coming episodes.